Showtime. It is EE Spotlight Event Ensemble with Jerice from MJK Events. And hey. <laughs> hey, Scott. <laughs> you know, I, I've done a few of these and some people are very quiet, but I'm looking forward to this one because I know that you're vibrant. I mean, uh -huh. just look, look at your new your new um, promotional material. I mean, you got your hands in the air. You are there. You are planning. I mean, that, that looks great. I just got to tell you. Um, and it's like you, dynamic. Um, Aww, I want to thank you, Scott. Oh, you're so welcome. I, I want to start with your tagline because it really sets you apart from everybody else. You are? I am MJK Events for a magical, joyful, kinetic event. Contact MJK Events. Ooh, you had that all down. I like that. So magical, I get. Joyful, for sure, right? Yeah. But what makes it kinetic? Is, is it what makes me kinetic? Are you saying that I do not have energy? You do, you do. But I'm curious of how that relates to, okay. If somebody said they wanted a fun event, that would be obvious. If they wanted a joyful event, that would be obvious. But kinetic, it, it's, not a it's not a word choice that comes across often and it means something to you. That's what I'm looking for. So for me, kinetic means a lot of energy. So high energy, lots of enjoyment, lots of magic happening, kinetic, things moving around, lots of energy. Ah, sounds like a DJ I know, but I digress. This is I wonder about you. who that would be. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, but there's some there's something else that you talk about that is unique to your style of event planning something about culture what what, what is that phrase yes it's like what are you talking about yes i do like for for my events for my couples my clients that if they have special cultural traditions to include those in their event because not oh. everybody does that and some people try to shy away from it but i um i encourage people to uh to highlight that so I, cultural I, touches of course traditional touches yes i want for um, the events to have a lot of meaning right. and um something that future generations so their future family members will enjoy and look back on and possibly you know learn something about about their family Ooh, i like that so does it matter if it's French, Russian, Hungarian, um, African, uh, again, the gambit, right? Um, are, are there preferences here? No, there's no preferences. I, I welcome all. So here's a thing from Girl Scouts. I volunteer for Girl Scouts and um, one of my favorite events is the um, World Thinking Day. And that is where we would pick uh, troops from different countries and learn about that country, you know, their traditions, their foods, anything new about that country and like present a report. And so I've always enjoyed all the different countries, even when it comes to like the Olympics. One of my favorite parts of the Olympics is the parade of flags. Especially when they're wearing their, especially when they're wearing their traditional outfits and their flags. So that's just something that I've always enjoyed. I love that. One of the things that I like to coach my couples on when they're from different backgrounds is to say something to their new in-laws in that in the language that's not their native language. So if he, for example, is Jewish and she is Hispanic then they would say something in Spanish to the in-laws or maybe something in Hebrew on the other side that would be unexpected because it's not their native tongue. And everybody's like, wow, they took the time to do that. It's very, very special. Um, I did experience that with you this morning in our event uh, ensemble meeting. <laughs> did you follow that I was saying thank you in different languages? <laughs> well, I, yes, I did. And I was like, how did he know that? How did he find that out? 
oh, well, I actually say thank you in probably 30 different dialects. So, so something you didn't know about me. Shocking. Okay. But this well, is not about yeah. me. It's about you. So the, <laughs> the cultural thing, um, does it also mm -hmm. pertain to food? I mean, I got the flag. I say include it. Yeah, no, I say include it um, wherever you can. So, you know, if your family is into a cultural meal, and even though you might be marrying into a family that doesn't necessarily always eat that food, I still say that you should try to mesh the two together as much as possible and, um, and make everybody feel welcome. So don't do it too heavily, possibly, depending on the family, don't do it too heavily, but for sure include, include for both. Pardon the pun, but just enough to give them a taste. Just a little taste. <laughs> now, now, what about the ceremony? Um, have you seen some unique cultural things that, well, Americans, we're just so, you know, she walks down the aisle, he says yes, she says maybe, and da, 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 and it's all over. But I would assume in different cultures, it's done differently. It is done differently. And, um, you know, I, I pride myself on being a continual learner. So, with given that as um, something to have to learn, not have to learn, to get on that. And um, my very first wedding, when I got vacation, it was in a, an Indian wedding. And I had been told maybe not to take that as my first one, but I still did it anyways. And I did have a huge learning curve and it was beautiful. There was lots of colors. There was different, there was um, specific geographical um, directions that certain parts of the ceremony should face. There were things that had to happen within certain time frames, clockwise. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was beautiful and I loved it. And it was very different from here comes the bride. She's walking down the aisle. Yes, it's beautiful. She's with her dad. She comes down to the uh, to the altar to the front with her uh, fiance. They say, "I do." There's a kiss. There might be a sand ceremony, and then they're off. This had okay. had a few more pieces to it, so it was awesome. See, you you get me rolling with the sand ceremony because I like to encourage couples whenever they say we want to do the sand, and then I ask them why. Well, because we saw it and we thought it was different, and we want to do something different. Yeah, but if you saw it already, then it's not different. Would you like to do something that's truly different? Well, what do you have in mind? And then you get to share with them the wealth of your knowledge, which is why I like working with you, because you are a continual learner. So when you bring ideas, you listen to your couples, but at the same time, you have a wealth of options that can really add flavor, whether there's a ethnic background or a cultural background or not, you bring all that to the party and that becomes something that allows you to put your stamp of uniqueness, but also for the couple to feel that they did something that nobody else in their family has seen before that allows them to say, this was our day. And yes. One comment that just drives me nuts. Oh, is... oh I already know, here it comes. <laughs> Can I cover my ears? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you say well, it. it's always been done that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful, awful. Well, that's great. It doesn't have to continue being done that way. <laughs> well, no, there's, there's a place for tradition. Don't get me wrong. Listen, we yes, always sing right? Sweet Caroline at the wedding. Well, then we're going to do that. Um, yep. Or the opposite. Right. Well, my Aunt Grace sings New York, New York at every wedding, and she is not singing that at my wedding. Well, okay, then she's not. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking as a planner. What is your absolute favorite moment on the wedding day? It could be, you know, from I know the planners start very early and they're the first in and the very, very last to leave and sometimes multiple locations. But of all the things that happen at a wedding, what is your favorite moment? I don't know that I have a single favorite moment, 
that um, probably one of the first moments is um, is when they're walking down the aisle. Everybody's in place. You know, we've had had our chats about how to hold the flowers, how to pause. But as they're walking down the aisle, that is one of my favorite moments because um, because we've made it. And from there, it doesn't matter as long as we get down that aisle. Okay. My next, yes. No, 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 you don't get to next yet because we're still on the first. <laughs> we'll get to the next later. Okay. Because <laughs> you've already All caught right. my attention. You talked about how you hold the flowers and, and where mm -hmm. or how you pause. Well, what's that all about? Mm -hmm. What is that? So not holding the flowers up so that it's like a third mound on your on your chest. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> holding it holding it lower so that they their faces can be seen and their beautiful dress lower can be seen lower. <laughs> lower <laughs> and then with their walking don't race down the aisle take your time walk slowly yes and that goes for the bridesmaids too i'm not talking about just for the for the bride and is there something about the pause that you mentioned um well that that just meaning pausing as they're walking. So not ah. pacing down the aisle. So it's about the pace. Step, slowly, yes. Mm -hmm. So when I have the opportunity to provide music for the ceremony, I actually suggest that the bride take a pause. That she pick a point where she's actually going to stop, take in a breath mm -hmm. and take it in. Just look at everyone and everything and let it imprint on her because the day goes like that. It mm -hmm. is gone. Yeah. But the, mm -hmm. the mental thought of stopping for the moment to take this in allows for it to become a picture in her mind that stays with her for a lifetime. And so when you mentioned pause, I wasn't sure if you were thinking about that, <laughs> but now you can add that to your pause process my pause moment <laughs> yeah, pause moment pause well i don't know moment. if we're going pm or am but okay <laughs> hey <laughs> hey don't go there i, I know i'm on it i'm with you i got it <laughs> yes okay but i interrupted mm -hmm. you because you had a second favorite moment what is that yes so, so my second moment is when um they are doing their family pictures and all the family is around and they're all excited and they're getting all these pictures taken. I love pictures. Pictures are a huge thing for me. Um, Cause I've already said about for future generations to enjoy. So right. um, pictures are very, very important to me. And they're always so excited to, uh, to be with the family members. So that's another favorite moment. I like that. I always coach couples you're never going to get these people back in their suits and dresses. This is the one moment, the one day, the one time that they're all going to be dressed and that they're all going to be there in this moment. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yes, it's tiring. And yes, it takes a lot of time. But if you have a planner that can, you know, shuttle people over when the photographer um, has a shot list and who, what, when, where, how, and why, then instead of where is that great, you know, and Grace is already there because the planner has the shot list working with right. the photographer and that makes everything, it's the grease that makes the wheels roll, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and sometimes planners will take a moment when the photographer is doing his or her thing and they recognize that the couple's not going to have appetizers because that's the time that the guests are having appetizers and they're doing pictures. She or he will bring over a, a little plate, a little nosh, something for the couple mm -hmm. to snack on. Because I've seen yes. grooms just oh, full on pass out because they didn't have breakfast yeah. or they were so nervous or whatever. Right. Not just the bride. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That that is one thing that I stress to my clients and the and the bridal party is to eat and to drink water and drink a lot of water. And I, I usually provide snacks and water 
to to them in their in their rooms, in the suites. Um, Having worked with you, I know that that's the case. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that, Scott. And and yeah. it's not just an Arizona thing, you know, because it's always hot here. No. but but it doesn't matter yeah. where you are. That that is so important. Yeah, I did a wedding up in Colorado, and I was stressing to them, eat, drink water, eat, drink water, and this one person. There's always one. <laughs> didn't didn't uh, quite do it the way that that person should have. And they did go down during the wedding. And it was, you know, just, it was distracting and, you know, somewhat scary for people to just all of a sudden right. see this younger person mm -hmm. disappear up there. So, um, yeah, stress it again and more. Drink water. So, it's fine to have your champagne. It's fine right. to have your whiskey or whatever, but drink water. Right, because then it'll slush it all around. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, <laughs> so, you know, I was yes. in my sister's wedding, so I can plan my wedding. Or my, my aunt sure. likes to do this, so she can help me, right? It's possible, yes. I, you know, I don't know exactly. Oh, you're such a diplomat. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what kind of results you're going to receive from that, but um, yes, many people can can plan uh, a party, an event, a wedding, but not everybody can pull all of those resources together. All of those frienders, vendors, wedding professionals can pull them all together and working together as one team. And that is what really needs to happen is all of us wedding professionals working as one team. I love that. I love that. Um, and that's why I always encourage couples to have a professional planner, not their aunt and not their uh, maid of honor or their friend or whatever. Um, and, and I know a lot of brides who have said, I didn't have a planner and I never want that to happen to um, an, an, another bride. And so I have become a planner, but they don't do what you do, which is learn, study, practice your profession to be a professional planner. Um, and I know that that's what you bring to the party, which is why it's easy to refer you so often. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I, You're I welcome. do try to stay up to date with um, all the different uh, things. It's okay. That can be learned. <laughs> and, um, all the experience. There's experience also behind doing a number of right. weddings and events and things that you learn along the way that you might have read or might have heard like in a podcast, but until you actually experience it and then things start to kick into gear and you use all of your training to problem solve and um, stay calm, offer other suggestions, have other suggestions already ready to go in case something happens. That's where um, you might not necessarily get that from someone that isn't a wedding planner that is stepping in as a planner. There you go. You said wedding in there, but I know you do more than just weddings. I do. I enjoy doing events as well. I enjoy doing galas for um, for uh, charity. Mm -hmm. Charity. Did you hear <laughs> them talking about charity events today? I did hear that. My ears opened up even wider this mm -hmm. morning when I heard that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, I, you know, I. I have a giving heart. And so I do volunteer with a lot of different organizations and um, I enjoy helping organizations have fun and memorable events. So, yes. Joyful and kinetic. <laughs> All right. If you can hear me, Share with me one secret as a planner. You want one secret? Okay, I'll take one secret. Okay. Sorry. 
<laughs> but I will give you a secret. Um, one secret is to also for the planner to drink water and stay hydrated and to keep a joyful heart about whatever is happening, whether it's pleasant or not, stay joyful, stay positive, and um, do all that you can to keep your clients calm and, uh, and present in the moment. Ooh, I like that, present in the moment. Excellent. And a great tip. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, Juris. Thank you, Mr. Scott. This was fun. <laughs> you know, you, you make it easy because you're, you're a good uh, person to talk to. I'll close with that.